if they put the bickles back on her, you are bold enough to go back up yonder and tell them, didn't I tell you not to put any pickles on this? And then you come to tell me you ain't bold enough to tell somebody about Jesus, the one that saved you, the one that delivered you, the one that gave you eternal life, the one that said, I'm going to help you, the one that said, I, I, oh, I oh, we, my hand. Praise the name of Lord Jesus Christ. We're excited what God is doing right here, the Pax Revival Center Church. And baby, we made it into the year 2018. The devil said we weren't going to make it. The devil told you you weren't going to make it. You made it. You need to be with us right here, the Pax Revival Center Church today. Three great, awesome services, early worship at 10, 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. revival service. I'll be back right after this. You don't want to miss that Wednesday night service. It's an awesome time in the Lord where I get to preach. I get to pray for folk, uh, you know, folks that I, I have more time to give personal ministry. Make your plans to be with us every Wednesday night right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church. Great things are happening Wednesday night, 7.30. We'll see you in the house. You don't want to miss Friday morning. Every Friday morning, great things are happening. I will be praying for the sick. If you need a miracle from God, you want to be here every Friday morning at 1030. It is called a miracle service because miracles take place. Make your plans to be with us Friday morning, 1030. Bring someone. Oh, you don't want to miss that Friday morning service. Every Friday morning is an awesome time, Wednesday night. But today is an awesome day. Today, here we are in the very first Sunday of the year that I want to reach my hand in my pocket and get a hold of the oil and begin to pray over you today. I really believe that God wants to do some great things in your life. I really believe that this year is a year of turnaround, of, which a which year that God is going to bring restoration back to your family. How does it work? you got to get started with God first. If you want God to fix some things, you got to put God first. Get started first Sunday, first Sunday of the year. Me and my family's coming. If your family don't come, you come on anyhow. Regardless of what weathers is, regardless of what people say, regardless of anything. There's some church folks that says, I need something from God. When you get desperate, you want something from God. I want to see you here today. Take you into a live service where somebody's life was changed at this time. And come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Cataracts. We melt those cataracts in Jesus. Dissolve them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Eyes. Eyes be healed. Come on, church. I need someone to help me pray. This is what camping's all about. Healing in Jesus' name. Healing in Jesus' name. Melt them in Jesus' name. Be gone in Jesus' name. I want you to close your eyes and open it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, mama, mama, she call out mama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, mama, 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 she call out. Hallelujah, mama, mama. I don't have to tell you. I feel the anointing up in here, Brother Curtis. I feel God up in here. I feel, see, when it's a God thing, it's not a man, mama, 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 she says. Lord, this great woman of God, complete healing. Complete healing. Complete healing. Complete healing in Jesus' name. Yeah, mama, mama, she. I want you to close your eyes and open them. Mama, she called my mama, man. He a lot of my. Oh, hallelujah, mama, she called my mama. How's your eyes? He a lot of my mama. Oh, every single one of them is saying the same thing. That, that you know, they can see the eyes. Oh, healing in Jesus' name. God, you've done it for the others. You can do it for her. Complete healing. Complete healing in Jesus' name. Complete healing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to close your eyes. Healed in Jesus' name. Open your eyes. In Jesus' name. Oh, oh hallelujah. Just praise him for it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we're excited what God is doing. And so many miracles is already taking place. And here we are in the first of the year. Miracles are going to be taking place. I really believe this is a year of increase. I really believe that this is a year of expansion. I really believe that, that God wants to do something great. Into the preaching of God's word at this time. In the book of John chapter 11, the story of Lazarus, we all know the story of Lazarus. He was dead. But it was temporarily dead because Jesus knew what the end was going to be. 
And verse 44 is where I want to jump in at for time's sake. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said to him, Loose him and let him go. You may be seated. People all dressed up, bleeding on the inside. But people are dressed up with things of their past. I borrowed this coat this morning in order, to, in, in order to illustrate something. Some things in life that just don't fit anymore. You don't fit in the way you used to fit in. You used to be in the world, but you just don't fit in it. The Bible tells me that in the book of John chapter 11, that Lazarus, that Lazarus was dead and after he became to be dead, you need to hear this this morning. After he began to be dead, when you lose the relationship between you and God, the personal relationship, the walk with God, how in that testimony, people will wrap you up with things that you can't get out of. Lazarus was alive when Jesus spoke him alive, but he was wrapped up with things that people put on him. You got to be careful hanging around and lose that, you know, that spiritual walk, lose that personal relationship, yet you begin to walk with God and talk with God. Then people begin to put things on you that don't fit. The clothes just don't fit. You can't hang around Billy Bob the way you used to hang around Billy Bob because you just ain't like Billy Bob anymore. You used to hang around those and you don't fit in with those. They talk a different language when you get saved. How do you give me, you get a brand new language. You don't talk like you used to. You used to use language and this, uh, uh, slang words of the world. You don't use that anymore. Now you begin to talk about how do you, you, when somebody comes to me, I'm broke, can't get out of it. Now your language is, well, let, let me pray for you. God to help you out of it. I come this morning to take off something that the world has put on you that just don't fit on you anymore. I come to tell you today that you can get off of those clothes and, and with, with, you know, the, you know, those, you know, the garments of this world that the, the world has placed upon you. The world has placed something upon you and you just don't fit in into it anymore. People are, are all dressed up, but they're bleeding on the inside. People are hurting. I, 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 which I deal with people every single day and people are hurting. And when God wants me to awaken you out of the sleep that you're in today because he's got a plan for you in your life. See, God, God has a big plan. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1, seeing their forth come pass about with so great cloud of witness, lay, us, lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside every weight of sin that does easily beset us and let us run with patience. Let us run with patience. Let us run with patience with the race that God has set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him endured the cross, despising the same and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. God says, I want you to lay down some things. So this is an illusion of uh, which of a race, of, a, which of the Olympic race. That you got to lay down those weights because you, whenever they would teach them and train them and run, and they said, I want you to put all this weight upon you so it'll make you stronger that you can run whenever it comes time to run. He said, but when the real race gets here, you lay down that all that weight so that you can run and run with patience so that you can finish this race. I've come by today to tell some of you, you've been running and you've had all this weight. If you get rid of that weight, you can run a whole lot faster. You get rid of all that hatred and bitterness and, and strive and, and things that's in your heart where people done you wrong and, and now you can't get over it. You can run a whole lot faster if you get rid of all this. You get rid of that you know, the spirit of jealousy and, and the spirit of, well, she got a car and I ain't got a car. She got a husband and I ain't got a husband. She she got this and yeah, she got a car, but she got a car payment. She got a husband. Now she's got to deal with problems. Now, how did yeah, she got this and she got this? There's always a payment that goes along with, with everything that you get in life. I stopped by the day to tell some of you, let's get away from anything that God did not place upon you. If it don't get glory and praise under, uh, under God, when people look at us and, and as we study the Word of God, and, and which as we read the Word of God in the book of Acts, chapter 3, uh, verse number 1 said that Peter and John went together. 
the temple and they went to pray. On the way to prayer meeting, how do they begin to find a lame man in verse number two? And the Bible said that he had been lame from his mother's room and he laid at the gate called Beautiful, waiting for somebody to bless him and waiting for somebody. Seeing Peter and John looked upon him. Peter said, look upon us, fasten upon us in verse four. Look on me because I've already got rid of what I used to have. Now you're standing down there begging, but I'm gonna come by to tell you, you don't have to be a beggar. And verse number five said they looked at him expecting to receive something. But verse number six, Peter said, silver and gold have enough, but such as I have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up. If you ain't got nothing, you ain't got nothing to give. People are looking at us for us to help them through what they're going through. Help them through the storms of life. People are hurting. People are hurting really bad. And they're waiting for somebody. And the Bible said that Peter and John picked him up and took him into the temple and began to praise and worship God. So why do we allow people in our neighborhood, people on our job, they are all wrapped up in a bandage. We allow the bandage to live, but the person inside of the bandage to die. We allow the person to go through the storm in their life, but we do not stand up and say, you know what, I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to help for them. But it's time this, church, this morning that this church stands up and begins to say, I'm not going to walk by people that are sick without praying for them. I'm not going to walk by people that don't know Jesus without telling them. I, I told people this past week, I wouldn't see Brother Lawrence in the hospital. Your Brother Lawrence, he, he has a have a knee replacement. I went to see him in the hospital. He didn't know I was in there. This little nurse was in there. He said, before you touch me, before you talk to me, I need to ask you a question. And the lady says, what is she says? He said, do you know Jesus? Oh, yes, I know Jesus. So he was talking to him, uh, talking to her back and forth. Here come this other little nurse past me, and, and Brother Lawrence still didn't know I was there. I, I was waiting for them to get finished. And, and she walked up and said, I'm your nurse for the day. He said, I'm going to tell you now, you can't nurse me. You can't do nothing until I asked you a question. Do you know Jesus? Because if you don't know Jesus, you ain't touching me. If you don't know Jesus, see, oh, yeah, I know Jesus. And I walked around. Oh, see, that's my pastor right there. He's my pastor. He, uh, he comes to the hospital. Now, here comes the doctor in. And the doctor, is, uh, he, he was looking at the numbers and said, Mr. Lawrence, everything's good and everything's going good for you. Can I talk to you a little bit? Is it okay for me to talk with that? He said, before you talk to me, I need to talk to you, doctor. I need to ask you a question. <laughs> do you know Jesus Christ? <laughs> oh, do you? Oh, yes, I know Jesus. He said, well, then it's okay. You can touch me and talk to me. Why? Because we cannot live in this world and not let and help people find out who Jesus is. People are dying and people have got all kind of garments and clothes on that just don't fit anymore. We need to say, hey, hey, well, pastor, I'm going through. Yes, we have. We went through hell and back. We've been through the smoke and our clothes smell like clothes. It smell like we feel you felt like that we died and it was all over with. But I come to tell you this morning, God says to me and you that we need to get up from behind. Where was Adam? Adam was hiding behind the leaf. Where are you, Adam? Now, God was asking Adam where he was, not because he couldn't find Adam. He knew where he was at, but he wanted Adam to know where he was at. He said, Adam, where are you at? I want you to realize I did not create you for you to be hiding behind a leaf. I don't want you to be hiding. I want you to, and which God did not save us just for us to come to the church, save us just for us to come to the church and just be beautiful and come and sing hallelujah hallelujah no no that's not what he saved us for he saved us to go into the streets he saved us to go into the highways and the hedges he saved us to go out to be soul winners oh you know what they call this place up here where I stand they call this the pulpit the pulpit why what is the pulpit it's something to pull people up out of the pit I come to tell you today it's time for us to be in the pulpit on the street corner be in the pulpit where you work. Be in the pulpit where you live. Oh, it's church. You know when you say, well, pastor, I don't understand what's going on. Hold on a second. As long as that we got these old raggedy clothes put on us, and I'm not talking about these clothes. I'm talking about you know, the, un the unrighteousness. Uh, as the book of Zechariah, I want you to go with me to the book of Zechariah in you know, chapter 3. I want you to find you know, the, book of, the book of Zechariah because some of you, how do you been just where Lazarus was? Lazarus was was in the grave God had that Jesus had already called Lazarus name but Lazarus was still bound 
Some of you have been called by God. You've been called by God. You've been called by God and God's dealed with you and God's called you and he's dealing with you and he's calling you. He's dealing with you and he's calling you. He's dealing with you and he's calling you. But you're still all wrapped up. You're wrapped up in what the world has put on you. But I come to help you to get unwrapped today. I come to help you to get free today in Jesus' name. I come to tell you you can make it. Hear what the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. And he showed me Joshua. Now this is not the same Joshua. Because this is the high priest, not the same one that walked around the walls, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right side to resist him, resisting the priest. The Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord has that chosen the city of Jerusalem, he rebukes thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed, I want you to hear this, a chosen priest, but still clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel, kind of like the church today is. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, says, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him, behold, I have caused thy iniquities to pass from thee. And I will clothe thee with the chains of raiment. God wants to change something in our life. What used to, we used to wear don't fit anymore. Somebody been talking about how much weight that I lost. You know, to be honest with you, I was size 48 in my coat and I'm size 44. Those size 48s just don't fit anymore. How I put them on and I, I guess my arms is even strength. It just don't, it, it don't fit like it's supposed to. You're not supposed to fit in the world like you used to fit in. You're not supposed to act like the world. Well, they used to be so friendly to me. You know why they're not friendly to you? How to, because you're not friendly to the God they serve. You know why they're not friendly? Because they, how can two walk together except they agree? Now, our job is not to forsake them and leave them in the world, but our job is also not to lay down and say, I'm going to let them cover me up. Oh, no, 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 no. We need to reach out. And he said, take away the filthy garment in verse number four. And he says in verse number five, and I will set a fair mirror upon your head, so that the, set a fair mirror upon his head, and clothe him with a garment. And the angel of the Lord stood by. God said, it's time to change your garment. And the angel of the Lord protested and said unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord. Y'all hear verse 7. If you don't hear nothing else, I hope you're following me in verse 7. He said, and the Lord says, which, because it is a, a prophecy that has conditions to it. God, oh, so many times gives us prophecies, but he gives us conditions to it. And he said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou would walk in my ways, hello, if thou will keep my charge, hello, then, somebody say then, then shalt thou judge my house, and shall also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among them that stand by. He said two different things, conditions. I want you to stay in my way. I want you to keep my charges. If you, if you do this two things, there's three blessings of obedience. He says, he, he, says, uh, he, said, my, uh, he said, you shall judge my house. You shall keep my courts. And I will let you walk into the places of prosperity and peace. I will let you walk into the places of prosperity and peace. I'll let you walk where the angels are walking if you will keep it. And it goes a little bit further. And in verse 8, and said, O Joshua, the high priest, that thou art the fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wonders at. And for they, behold, they will bring my servant the branch. The branch is coming. Jesus is coming. He said, I'm going to cause him, verse number 10, and you shall every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. God said, I'm going to let a blessing be upon your house. I'm going to let a blessing be upon you. But here we are so many times. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Peter and John were sitting at the gate called beautiful. We're at a beautiful situation with, uh, it's a beautiful place with a terrible situation. We're at the place where there should be a place of praise and worship, a place of, 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 of a shouting. But here we find a man that is hurting. Even in the church house, we find people that are hurting. This is why it's so important when you love on people when they come to church. You don't know of some single mom that just had her lights cut off. You don't know if somebody just had their car took away. You don't know of some married woman that her husband just slapped and beat her up and, and which left for 
another woman. You don't know what that little mama that her kids just cussed her out. And she, they don't need to come to church and get the same thing. We need to be people of love. And we need to be people of peace. We don't need to be so judgmental and look to them and say they don't look like me. They don't like. They ain't supposed to act like you. They got a different mama daddy than you got. But we should all have the same earthly father that says we are all one happy family. We all pray in one for another. Whenever you find people that are hurting in the book of in the book of Mark, which in, which in chapter ten, how it tells us the story of blind Bartimaeus. Y'all remember blind Bartimaeus? He was sitting in Jericho. You know, Jericho was a city that was cursed, and, and you know, Jericho was a city that the walls fell down. And he was sitting inside of it in verse forty six of chapter ten. And it came to pass that when the disciples and great multitude come, blind Bartimaeus, how he was sitting by the wayside, and, and when, when they heard heard that Jesus had come by, he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon him. And then the Bible said in verse 48, he said, they begin to cry out and say, why don't you be quiet? Jesus ain't got time with you. But he cried out the more, Jesus had mercy upon me, son of David. And the Bible said in verse 49 that he stood still. If you want to get Jesus to your house, you won't get to Jesus to help you. You call out and begin to worship him whenever he began to say, thou son of David, David, he began to worship. That's a worship son of David. He said, I'll worship. And he called the comment, the blind man and the comfort him said, Bill, just calm down. He wants to see you. Uh, he wants to see you. He's calling for you. And verse number 10 is where I want to preach from. The Bible said he took off the coat that he had on. He had an a, a orange coat, yellow coat. I'm just using colors. He had a coat that just said something that I'm a beggar. He had the little, uh, little batch that said, yeah, I'm a beggar. I have the right to beg. He was a beggar because he was, daddy was the beggar because his, he was blind and, and, and which history says that he'd come from a blind family that his mother and father had problems with their eyes so they, he was blind and then, you know, they began to pass it down. He began to say, you take off that, go, you know, that garment in verse, uh, verse 50 and cast away. He's calling for you. You can't go hallelujah, and be completely free until you get rid of that garment. And the Bible said he throwed away the garment, verse 51, and the Bible said, Jesus answered and said, what is it that you want? Now, Jesus knew what he wanted. You know Jesus being Jesus, he knew what he wanted. Very obviously, a person's blind and you ask them what do you want, you know what they're going to say. I want my eyes to be healed. You know what they're going to say. But Jesus said, I need you to say it. Because anything you ask, I'll give it to you. He said, I just need you to say it. If you will say it, I give it to you. Not that he couldn't already knew it. And sometimes God gives it to us even without us asking. But he said, what do you want, blind Barnabas? My eyes to be seen. And Jesus told him, verse 52, Arise, go your way. And the Bible said his faith made him whole. And immediately he received his sight and he followed. But what happened? He got rid of what was on him before he could get the fulfillment. God is wanting us to reach out and say, you know, it's like a caterpillar coming out of, uh, out of the cocoon. I'm breaking out of what the world has put on me. I'm not letting the world call me something and I begin to be that. I'm getting out of the grave clothes and I'm getting into the place where God had, had me to be. God wants us to change our clothes. See, Daniel was praying, but whenever he went into the lion's den, before he went to the palace, he had to change his clothes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the fiery furnace, but before they went to the palace, they had to change their clothes. When you know, when, you know David was a shepherd and a giant killer, but before he went to the palace, he had to change his clothes. God wants us to get to the place that we change who we are. Now, we can't change all of us. We can only change part of us. How do we can change the part? How do you say, well, I believe that God can do anything. Yeah, but he wants you to do something. He can bring you and deliver you, but he wants you to pick up the cross and follow after him. He wants you to have that testimony that I've been saved, I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. He wants you to do something in your life. Isaiah chapter 61 probably tells it the best. And Isaiah chapter 61 said, the spirit of the Lord, Isaiah said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Hello, God has been set up on top of me because he has anointed me to preach good tithes to the meek. He anointed me to preach and to proclaim liberty to the captive and to open up the prison doors of them that are bound. What did he do? He anointed us, commissioned us to go in all the world. He told us not sit here. Why sit we here until we die? We sitting and let people in our house go to hell. 
We're sitting letting people on our, on our job go to hell. And we don't never tell them about Jesus. Shame on us. Shame on us that when we do not tell people that Jesus loves them and Jesus cares for them. Well, pastor, I'm not the preacher, but he didn't call for preachers in the book of Matthew. He said for us, the believers, to go in all the world and to preach the gospel. That it is not the pastor's job only, but it's our job to show the love of Jesus. Well, pastor, I just, I just don't have any boldness. I, I just can't say anything. Really? You go up to, to Burger King and you walk up to that counter and say, I want a big hamburger. I want your extra onions on it, some ketchup on it. And can you hold the pickles? And God forbid, if they put the pickles back on it, you are bold enough to go back up yonder and tell them, didn't I tell you not to put any pickles on this? And then you come to tell me you ain't bold enough to tell somebody about Jesus, the one that saved you, the one that delivered you, the one that gave you eternal life. Life, the one that said I'm going to help you the one that said I, I, oh we need to get holy boldness he said and speak the things of life you ain't got to be critical I have them come around me and they huffing and they're puffing. I don't know what this, I don't know what they I don't know what I don't know what it is they you know, they're huffing puffing on that. Hallelujah! It just stinks. I just know that it don't smell like the you know, the tobacco of the old Campbell that my grandpa used to smoke. It it, it smells something a little different. But do I go and criticize them? Oh no, I don't criticize them. I, I love on them. Hallelujah! I find Oh, we're excited. Here we are. We made it into the first of the year. Here we are, a brand new year, brand new beginning. And if you want God to do something for you, father and mother, get your children in the house of God. If it looks like your family's falling apart, there's one thing I, I don't understand, first lady, as people always say and say, you know, my world's falling apart, but they don't have God in their marriage. They don't have God in their house. How do you keep your house together? How do you have peace? You got to have God. It's a pyramid. It's a pyramid. God has to be at the top, man and wife at the bottom. It has to be God. We start this year off getting your children in the house of God. Mom, if your kids won't come, come on anyhow. Uh, you, you're right here at the Pax Revival Center Church. And we'll see you here today. Great things are happening. Don't you miss these great Holy Ghost services. Three services, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and 6 p.m. We'll see you in the house.